looks like an extremely solid automobile. No squeaks, no rattles, very well put together. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. As you may have noticed, it's very quiet here in the garage now. One, because of the pandemic we're involved in. The other is because we've got the new Model Y Tesla electric vehicle. So there's really no noise happening here. It's pretty much just me and the car. This is the latest model, the Model Y. You know, uh, if you watch this program or our CNBC show, you know we have a good relation with Elon and uh, we had fun driving the Cybertruck. But this is sort of the people's vehicle. This is the one that they're being mass produced right now. Uh, I think they've done about 12 or 14,000 of them, but you might not have seen one on the road just yet. But by the time this airs, airs there'll be more and more of them out there. Uh, this is the crossover model, and this is the performance version. You know, it, it, it's funny, when uh, Elon really started to produce electric vehicles, I remember a lot of people saying, oh, it'll do fine for a while. But once the Germans and the Europeans, anybody else get involved in the electric car market, it, you know, they're going to wipe them out. And that's really not the case. I've driven a lot of the European electric vehicles. They don't have the range. They don't have the the power, and most of them are minimum of thirty to thirty thousand dollars more to fifty or sixty thousand dollars more. So uh, this is an innovative company, you know. I, I always say anybody that can uh, sort of build a rocket in their backyard and send it into space and hook up with the International Space Station when they tell you they're going to make something, <laughs> you better take them seriously because if you can put a if you can put people into space safely and economically then you can build automobiles. And that's what Elon has done. I, I never quite get all the negative press, why people uh, get mad about it. Some people say it's because of the subsidies and that type of thing. But you know, here in America, we, I don't really watch a lot of sports, but I gotta pay for stadiums. I don't have children, but I gotta pay for schools. I don't mind. So to me, to subsidize something like this, which is, quote, the ultimate in fuel efficiency, being an electric vehicle, uh, I, uh, I have no problem with it at all. And the fun thing I like about Tesla is I like American-made stuff. And this is the classic example of this. Most of, most of the uh, materials in this vehicle are locally sourced. I'm sure some are not, but most are. And that's, I think, pretty impressive, too. And it's built by Americans. And uh, I don't get all the negativity. I mean, just the anger people get over it, you know? It's funny because steam ran this country from about early 1800s to about 1911. Then the internal combustion engine took over from 1911 to just about now. And I think from this generation forward, it will be alternative fuels. I, the gas car is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. But in terms of day-to-day -day driving, efficiency, lack of maintenance, the electric vehicle it's pretty darn good. I know I use a Tesla for running around and going to the airport and taking the wife out and doing that kind of stuff, and it's completely maintenance free. I enjoy my internal combustion stuff. You know, it's funny. To me, cars like Ferraris, Lamborghini, in, in the same way that uh, people use horses now. In, in, this, in this country, in the 1800s, horses were worked to death. They literally dropped dead in the streets. Now, there are more horses in America than there have ever been at any other point, and most of them are for pleasure. People enjoy them, and they ride them. And the, you'll always have your gas cars and your Ferraris, and you take them out on a weekend and run around, and you can do that with this, too. But the idea being, in terms of efficiency, quiet, pollution, this is the way to go. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about the vehicle. This is the Model Y. This is their performance model. It's based on the Model 3. You might notice some differences. It's about 10% bigger than the Model 3 all the way around, which I don't mind, because I'm 10% bigger than I was 10 years ago. So that seems fair. You see, it seems the same to me, because I'm 10% you know, bigger. So that's OK. Uh, got about an inch or so more of ground clearance. I'm not really a crossover guy. I, I have kind of big goofy land cruises when I want to do that and I have a sports car when I want to do that but if you're a young family and you like performance you like speed but you've got to uh, you know put the kayak in the back and take the kids to soccer boy this is the way to go I mean it is so incredibly fast it's as fast as 
any of the, well, certainly faster than any muscle car from the 60s by a long shot, and certainly faster than most modern sports cars at uh, a fraction of the price. You've got the 21-inch tires. Notice uh, the difference is there's no chrome. It's all sort of blacked out here. That's pretty nice. Um, it's got amazing uh, luggage space. The rear seat folds down. In fact, let's, let's start with the back of the vehicle and uh, take a look at what we got. Come on. We'll open up the trunk, show you what it looks like. Okay, as you see, you got a pretty good sized trunk there as well. And you've got these switches here. Actually, you could get a kayak back here or a canoe. There's a lot of space. And you've got a trunk in front as well. And it's also going to have a third row seating, which is supposed to come in 21. But the cool thing is, you know, it's funny, back in the 40s, Chevrolet for they used to sell something called a businessman's coupe, which was uh, a, a, had a single bench seat in the front, and then a huge area back here where a salesman could put his wares, you know, uh, whatever you're traveling from town to town, pots, pans, whatever you're selling, and you could just put everything in the trunk. And this is kind of the same type of thing. Plus, you could actually sleep in this. A lot of owners actually camp in these things, and look, there's all kinds of room. See, when I was a kid, there used to be a car called the uh, Nash, and that had seats that folded down into a bed. And of course, if you were dating some guy's daughter, and you showed up in that, well, the date was pretty much over. Yeah, the dad, that's it. You're not going out in the Nash. So you can pull that same stunt with this, but just don't show the parent how the seat goes down. I, 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 now, this sells for about... I think it's about $60,000, 62 something like that. This is the performance model. Top of the line has got every option in it. Okay. And I think the standard model is a little bit cheaper. Standard model has the 19-inch wheels, which some people like because it rides softer and it uh, has a bit more range, a little over 300, 300 and something miles. I think this is about 280 being realistic. Although I tend to get more miles with mine than I thought because of regen and all of that. So that's not a problem. And I think it's fair to say that the 400 mile battery is not far off. I think that's going to be Elon's next big surprise. That'll be the standard thing. That's something else I find amazing is because Tesla's always sort of been at the forefront of battery technology. And I, like a lot of people, believe once the Germans and others got involved in the electric car market, oh, they're going to have a battery twice as No, because Elon's been doing this a lot longer. And the, the thing I found most impressive about the whole Tesla experience is the fact that they built the infrastructure at the time they built the vehicle. And when he was building his little two-seater Roadster based on the Lotus, okay, he was putting the infrastructure in for the future. You know, all these other car companies build electric cars. They build the car, boom, you're on your own. Find some way to charge it, go to your friend's house in Boston or your uncle's place in Sacramento. Whereas with Elon, he actually built these charging stations. Initially, uh, LA to San Francisco. And now you can go all the way across the country without fear of running out of electricity or being stranded somewhere. So that's that's pretty amazing. And I, I don't think we're far off from the days when, oh, we got to stop for gas? Why don't we get an electric car? Because that battery is not that far off. But uh, very, very impressive. Come on, let's, uh, let's take a look at the inside of the front. You know, the fun thing about Tesla is you can do everything through your phone. You know, you're in the house, you want to set the air conditioner. OK, it'd be cool when you get in or hot when you get in, whatever it might be. And uh, obviously, you can open it any of the doors. Here, let's open the trunk. Let's see what we got. Here we are. Ta da! All right, you got a pretty good sized trunk in there. Uh, initially, it might seem like it'd be bigger, but obviously, you've got all kinds of, you've got a front engine here as well. But that's pretty deep. That's certainly a good sized trunk. And it's all plastic, so you can put all kinds of bathing suits and stuff in here and just wipe it out. I don't know if it's got any drain holes. I don't think so, but it's pretty easy to take care of. It's just, you know, it's so funny. My Model S has a trunk in the front as well, or a frunk, whatever they call it. I can't say frunk. I say a trunk in the front. I, I don't think I've ever used it. I've opened it once or twice. But it's nice to know you can, because if you've got a family, you've got three or four kids, you know, it's great. 
And of course, you got your washer fluid right here. You've got, uh, oh, you got a toe strap right in here, a toe hook, rather. That comes out. And I believe this has a toy capacity of about 3,500 pounds, something like that. So you can tow a trailer with it. You know, people think, oh, electric, you can't tow anything. Is it going to overheat if you tow? No, you can't. It's, you know. Let's put that back in there like that. And this shuts just normally. Something this has, which is really cool, is a heat pump. You know, when I was a kid, when you bought an air-cooled car like a Volkswagen, uh, that used to come with a gasoline, <laughs> a gasoline heater. You'd light it with a match, and it would heat the car using the fuel in the tank. And very efficient. I mean, it got really hot because it was, it was a gasoline-fed fire. But you went from about 35 miles a gallon to about 8, 9, 10 miles a gallon because it was using the gasoline from the engine. And if you got out of the car and left the heat around all night, then if your car didn't burn to the ground, you might have had a completely empty gas tank. Well, obviously those are illegal. You have to be crazy to put one of those in your car nowadays. But, you know, most cars, they use the heat from the coolant to heat the car, and then you have a, you have a, um, a huge electric motor running the heater, circulator, pumps, all this kind of stuff. The way it works is the heat pump captures the heat from the battery and the motor and circulates that throughout the car. I don't totally get it. I, I understand the principle involved. I, I, I haven't looked at a schematic or seen how it works, but that's sort of the way it was explained to me. It becomes more efficient because you're using heat that would normally be wasted. In an ordinary vehicle, the heat that came off, there'd be a vent here to just get it out of the car, just get it out. This captures it, saves it, circulates it. And it does the opposite in the summer with cool weather for cooling. So it's, uh, I think that's one of the achievements they're really proud of because it's not all just battery technology. The thing I, I like about Tesla is they're just looking for new ways to do everything. This has the autonomous driving, fully autonomous now, for the most part. You know, on my Model S, it's only autonomous on the freeway or the highway. Now I understand that this works to recognize stop signs and crosswalks and all that other kind of stuff. Obviously, you should drive with both hands on the wheel, and, but it's just another one of those safety features. You know, people always think it means, uh, oh, I can hop in the back seat with a bottle of scotch and the car will drive me there. No, that's pretty stupid. But it can save your life. I mean, the number of times on, on my Model S when I'm on the freeway and I set it and I'll look to the radio station or something will distract me. Oh, and then I feel the car starting to slow, okay, because it caught me. It caught me for that one fraction of a second when I wasn't looking. You know, I remember when anti-lock brakes first came out, people said, I don't want anything interfering with my brake. We're always resistant to change. And the thing I love about Tesla is it's constantly about change. It's constantly about updating and, and coming up with uh, with new ideas. And this, this heat pump is sort of the latest thing, the latest technology. It's not sexy like performance or, or something you can even see. It's just one of those features that I think it gives it a leg up on some of the other vehicles that are out there. Let's take a look at the interior and the dashboard and all that. Come on. And the interior is a nice place to be. You know, this is the performance model, and when I think of performance cars, I always think of the row of gauges, you know, manifold pressure, you know, exhaust gas temperature, all this kind of stuff. But of course, being electric, you don't have any of this. But you do have real wood, which is pretty good. That's not plastic, that's a real slab of wood, so that's kind of cool. Uh, you have your key, you got your Tesla key. Actually, your phone is your key. One of my favorite things, is, which is really handy, see you have wireless charging. You can put two phones in here, put that there, and oh, there you go, charging away. And, uh, and just shut it if you want, and it'll charge up. Uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm so used to uh, carrying the extra wires and plug it in. You know, it's one of those things. You remember the old days you used to plug it in? I just put it down there. Uh, what do you have here? This opens 
and another storage area there and it's got magnets just sort of close it like this and you have another storage area here you have your your cup holders and and your screen uh i've gotten really used to this you know when tesla first came out with a big screen like everything else that was new i went oh my god like a big giant ipad in the middle of the thing it looks but now i use it as a rear view mirror in conjunction obviously with the side mirrors and the others and it's really handy because it just tells me what's right behind me I, I almost feel weird when I get in a car that doesn't have it now. Quite pleasant. You know, I don't like busy steering wheels that have a ton of switches and gauges on them. So you just have just these two rollers here and your horn right there on both sides. Pretty nice. It's got the leather interior, but it's what they call, I guess, vegan leather. It's synthetic leather. I can't tell the difference, which is pretty good because I got a pretty good eye uh, or nose because I've got some... You know, I've got some cars from the from the 30s, 40s, and 50s that have that really rich leather, especially some of the older Mercedes with that real aromatic smell to it. Um, but this feels like that and looks like that. And the fact that no animals are injured and all that kind of thing, you know, that's great. I think that's terrific. So it's nice that they can do this. And it's got the stitching as traditional leather has, which is, I think is very nice. The days of cameras for side mirrors are coming. They're just not legal yet. It's like back in the 50s, dual headlights were considered not legal because they were too bright and would blind people. And it took a lot of lobbying and legislation. Okay, you can have dual headlights. And I think uh, we've had cameras that work quite well, but they're not legal yet. So you've got to go with the traditional sort of outside adjustable mirror. Um, nice size steering wheel. And being a performance car, uh, I like this size wheel. Um, obviously no transmission, so it's, it's, well, quote, an automatic, but it doesn't have a transmission. You just have one gear. You know, when, when Elon first came out with the uh, Lotus model of the Tesla, it had a two-speed transmission. And I think I, actually, I think I actually broke it because electric motors have so much torque. There's almost no transmission that can take the power. So they go for this just one gear and it's direct drive and boom you've got torque from zero you know when you register in a uh, gasoline car it's at so many rpm you have so many foot pounds this you have x number of foot pounds from zero and then the minute you step on the gas that's why you don't need a transmission to multiply the power through a set of gears because electric motors have so much power that it's not necessary but i think we're just about ready to take this thing for a ride uh, Let's do it. Well, first impression, it drives very much like my Tesla S. My Tesla S probably has a few more features, sunroof and a few other things. Uh, I think mine is all, well, this, this is it's quite fun. It pulls really hard. I think my Tesla S will probably take it, will probably pull it, but uh, this is pretty quick. Again, it's a performance crossover, so you you got the speed of a muscle car, the power of a muscle car, with all the load carrying capacity of a crossover with a hatchback. I mean, it's it's a very eminently practical vehicle. It's it's and it's I mean, it's fast. It's it's one of the fastest vehicles. You know. I would think you'd have to go to a, one of those Hellcat or Charger wagons or something to get the kind of power that this thing has. It is, a, it, is, it is fun and it's addictive. You know, the last time I was driving the uh, Vanderhall three-wheeled electric, uh, when I say it doesn't pollute, I, I get inundated with, oh, you little, you jerk, don't you know the coal-fired plant? They, now, I'm not talking about where electricity is made. I'm talking about the vehicle itself. Now, in some states, like California, uh, if you have solar panels at your house and you charge your car with solar panels, it is totally guilt-free. Then you've got almost zero emissions, okay? But what I keep saying is, and it never seems to get, to get through to people, is that it costs more in energy to build an electric car. But once it's built, the vehicle itself does not pollute 
as much as a gas car. It doesn't pollute at all, okay? Yes, the power plant, making the power is polluting. I will give you that, yes, I, I'm saying it. But once again, the place manufacturing the gasoline is polluting, and then the car itself is polluting. With this, the plant making electricity is polluting, but the car itself is not. Does that make any sense? Is that more clear? But there are a lot of places, as I said, are totally off the grid with solar panel. And then you have pretty much 98% non-polluting vehicles, something of that nature. But that doesn't matter to you, that's one thing. But uh, I, I, I like the thinking behind this. I like the fact that the synthetic leather looks exactly like real leather to me. I, I, I can't tell the difference. And that's all that counts, isn't it? I mean, that's important to a lot of people. Again, this is the performance model with the 21 inch wheels, which do aid performance, makes for a little firmer ride, and these tires do tend to blow a lot easier than the 19s. Uh, I, in my Model S Tesla, I've gotten three flats from hitting potholes, bang, and then, I, because it's such a thin wall tire, that's the only disadvantage, I think, to having a 21-inch tire. But that goes for a gas car, an electric car, that, that's pretty much the same. I like the constant innovation. Tesla's always coming up with interesting things. And on this screen, they got all kinds of different modes and trick stuff you can do. It's, you can put a fireplace in here, you can run Netflix movies, you can do anything you want. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Clever engineering here, this glass panel, you know, if you had this headliner, if you had a traditional headliner here, it would probably have come down this far, thus robbing you some headroom. But it seems very spacious now with this, this glass roof. I mean, you can feel it's a 100 degree day today, and this is, warm but it's not hot and the air conditioning can more than compensate for it. I tell you what I'm waiting for is a new Tesla Roadster. I was blown away by that because I don't really need all this space. I don't need all the crossover stuff. Uh, the Roadster really impressed me, A, because it's an open car. B went 630 something miles on a charge. That was pretty amazing. It did the quarter mile in something like 8.8. Eight, if that even seems possible. Uh, yeah, it's impressive. You know, sometimes I get annoyed in the comment section when you embrace new technology. People call you a sellout and all this kind of nonsense. And it's really not true. It's just something different. You know, I enjoy using my iPad, but I like reading books. You know, I have a first edition, a copy of uh, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. And I read it every year because I like just holding a 150 year old book in my hand, turning the pages and looking at the old type. It feels Christmassy, you know. In the same way I go out on weekends in a vintage car, you know. It's gasoline powered, it's a lot trickier to drive. You know, you gotta be more careful, but it's fun, it's interesting. I mean, I embrace old technology as much as I embrace new technology. And like it or not, this is the future. This is where it's going. You know, for new technology to succeed, it can't be equal. It's gotta be superior. You know, when the Wankel engine came out, it was a great idea, but it didn't get very good gas mileage and it didn't have a lot of power. But it was lighter, okay. Well, one out of three is not going to work. I mean, they sold a lot of Wankel engines, but eventually stopped production because it didn't have three of the factors. Modern electric cars like this one, you finally got the range of a gasoline car. Range is equal. You got way more power and way less maintenance. There's no first service. There's no 600 mile, 3,000 miles, 7,000 mile oil change. I've had my Tesla now for four years. I've never done anything to it other than clean it. And that's it. That's all you got to do. The autonomous driving is interesting. Let me show you how that works. Click it there twice. Okay, there we go. I mean, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you got to put your hand on the wheel occasionally. But now, 
you know, when I got my Tesla S, it really it can only use the autonomous driving on the highway. Now you can use it in city driving. So, I mean, it's okay. I think I just use it as another driver aid. I'm not sure I would rely on it, but but I like to drive. Some people don't. But it is amazing how much power you have. you'll see when we pull up to this you'll see the stop lights come on okay car, I'm not touching the brake I'm not touching anything oh see there's a stop light right there there's a stop light right there there's a truck in front of me there's a truck a car next to me okay once again I'm gonna put it in self-driving mode tap this twice see when the blue light blue steering wheel comes on now I'm in self-driving mode I've got to touch the wheel every 20, 30 seconds. Good just to rest your hand on the wheel. But the car is now driving itself, going 49 miles an hour. It lets me know there's a truck in the lane. I can see it there, and I can see it in front of me here, and I can see it through the windscreen. Seems like an extremely solid automobile. No squeaks, no rattles, very well put together. Most Tesla owners I know, a buddy of mine's had one since 13 or so, still on the original battery. I've got 20,000 miles on mine, mine is still on the original battery, so that's impressive. I just like new technology. People think, oh, did they give you one? No, I didn't, they didn't give me one. I paid full price for mine. In fact, I'm not sure if I ever told you the story how I bought my Tesla. Back in 2008, Elon came by the garage with this new electric roadster. And we got to be friends, and he gave me his phone. He says, here's my cell phone. I said, I won't bother you unless it's important. I'm not going to call you. Okay. Years go by, six years, whatever. Then around 2015, I was doing this show, and I thought, I'd love to get Elon on. Let me just call him and see what happens. I don't want to take a chance. What time is it now? Okay, it's 3 o'clock in Calo. All right, let's go. 3 o'clock. All right, I'll give him a call. So I call him right here. Oh, um, I go, Elon? Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, Jay Leno. Oh, Jay, hey, what's up? I said, I feel bad. Did I wake up? He goes, yeah, you kind of did. I said, Elon, I'm sorry to mean you wake you, but, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he goes, not in China. I go, oh, oh, look, I said, I feel bad. Okay, I'll buy a car. Look, okay, that's what I'm calling. Uh, send me the car, get, get me in blue. <laughs> you know, I felt so bad that I woke him up. I bought the car, but I'm glad I did because it's a great car. I love this thing. It's a lot of fun. And this being the performance model uh, makes it very cool. I mean, this is literally half the price of what I paid for my Model S. And it's got... Yeah, within maybe a few horsepower, just about the same power. So that's impressive. I think base price for these is in the 50s, and then this one is eh, 61,000 or something. But this has got everything, all the performance options, the dual motor, all that kind of stuff. So it's quite good. Okay, there's a stop sign or a light up here. Let's see if it can read the stoplight. If hopefully this camera I put in, this GoPro, will will show. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I'm not going to touch the gas or the brake. Let's see if my stoplight comes up on the screen. There's a stoplight right there on the screen. Okay, it just turned green. So now we will proceed through. Okay, it stops. Okay. Now I can get back on the gas again. Now I've taken over to make the turn. Now see, if I had programmed it in my GPS, then it would have taken the turn automatically. But since I did not, it stopped. Now, this was a normal day, and of course, life under coronavirus is becoming more and more normal every day. Uh, we would have a Tesla representative in the car who would show me all the new features. I'm sure there's all kinds of electronic things hidden in this screen uh, that I know nothing about, so I'm sorry I don't have those to share with you. But I can tell you this, it's a very well-made vehicle, extremely fast, and here to stay. I mean, 
they're cranking these out as much as Ford, GM, or Chrysler cranks out cars. And people are buying them and they're hugely successful. So, congratulations. American made product, use American workers, using the locally sourced stuff. I think it's great. And uh, I'm gonna order one of those roadsters. I like this, but I'm gonna wait for the roadsters. All right, see you guys later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>